I put my kids on keto this month. This is the second year in a row that we've done this, and both years keto changed our family in a way that is kind of like a night and day difference. And so I'm going to tell you more in a little bit how we found an allergy that was resulting in oppositional behavior during doing this keto trial with my kids. And, um, and I'm also going to show you sample days so you can see what I did feed them just for our first week. And then I'm going to show you some of our compromised foods, which is what I don't love feeding them. I don't feel like they're the most nutrient dense, but my kids absolutely love them and they're keto friendly. So it makes doing the diet um, not so blah for them. And it kind of is a morale booster a few times through the week. Do you want to hear more about kids on keto? Go ahead and click the like button. Um, click like on this video and let me know that you're interested. If you think I'm nuts, then I want to hear from you too. Just go ahead and comment down below. I really like hearing your feedback as long as it's respectful and constructive criticism because it's either something that I can address in a future video because it's, I'm guessing if someone vocalizes it, usually there's a few other people that are thinking about it. And so I can address that in another video or I, and I can also, like, I'm always happy to recheck what I do. I've, I've been wrong so many times in my life that hearing criticism doesn't really bother for me. bother me. It's like a different opinion, and I learn from different opinions all the time. But I definitely would love to hear from you down below. So some quick background. I did the GAPS diet for both my older kids and myself when my daughter was a toddler and my son was a nursling. You can see our GAPS story linked above here. Those kids, they're my older kids, they've been on and off low carb and I noticed that they never got the keto flu. And I think this is because they just transitioned on to low carb pretty much from weaning. Um, they also seem to be more resistant in getting hangry or low blood sugar crashes than most kids, including my little guy. So this is kind of why we did keto last year. Um, being able to transition easily and in, easily into ketosis is our natural body function and it's something that most Americans on the standard American diet or even a healthy carb based American diet um, don't have that ability anymore because our diets are just super carb heavy. And so this isn't a failure on anyone's part. This is just kind of the state of our dietary culture right now. Last year I started keto for them because I had seen so many benefits in my energy and mood and mental health and all of that. Um, as I had started the ketogenic diet that previous winter, I didn't start them right away because they were in public school and the schools that they were at at that time were not able to accommodate a dietary change that has to be as strict as keto. So last year I wanted to see what would happen to my kids if I just tried them on the keto diet. And what I got out of that one was an amazing improvement in my daughter who has a brain injury and cognitive disability diagnosis. She had major, major, like other people that didn't know, hadn't seen her in a while, like notice huge differences in her in processing speed, memory, speech, and emotional regulation. Like her cognitive function is just so much better on keto. Her social interactions, ability to be flexible, ability to carry out tasks, and transition to new activities have all been a massive improvement on the keto diet. Even her balance is way better. On uneven surfaces like a parking lot or driveway, she used to cling to me. And, but now I only have to help her if it's icy. And this is something that if she gets out of ketosis, because I've let her come out of ketosis every few months since we tried that last summer, um, the balance goes away, the working memory goes away, just like she does. Definitely her teachers and I all see a big difference with her in ketosis versus not. Seriously, like that last summer was life changing. It, our, both of our frustration level went way down and we had a blast that summer. Thankfully, she was in a classroom this year that was super supportive of dietary stuff. And so I was able to keep her on keto and she got the benefits of that all year. You can see her six month keto update. I'll link here and I'll link um, down in the description as well. To be honest, I didn't see a big difference with my boys being on keto. I do think that ketosis is good. Like I don't want them to get those that insulin all the time and the blood sugar high and lows all the time. So I did think it was good like for their overall general health, but I didn't see the night and day difference with my boys last year as I did with my daughter. Um, so after the summer or after a keto trial for about a month last summer, I did go back to giving my boys like they have an apple after lunch and they have a couple servings of grains a day. 
But this summer I wanted to try again. Um, if anything, I wanted the boys to get a break from the insulin and the blood sugar spikes, and I wanted to maintain their ability to get into ketosis. Like I said, my older kids, because they had been low carb as little kids, they didn't get, they transitioned right into ketosis with no problems. There's no keto flu, there's no lack of energy. They're just like immediately into fat burning mode. And I want that for my kids. I want them to be able to be in fat burning mode um, if their body needs to burn fat. I just feel like that's going to be beneficial for them as adults as well. I noticed the first summer that we did this, which was last summer, it took my four-year-old at the time a few days to transition into ketosis. He was like, he needed to have extra salt um, and he needed to have extra salt and extra electrolytes and he was a little lethargic and kind of cranky the first couple days until he transitioned into ketosis. Um, but then this year when I started it, I was really happy like I guess his body had learned and I was really happy to see that he just like my older two kids transitioned right into ketosis no crankiness no lack of energy um, I do give them a little bit of electrolytes but not as much as last year so that's really good improvement that their body kind of knows how to transition back into this normal state that's normal for humans so I picked a Monday in June is our start date and I let the kids know what was up. They looked through cookbooks to find out what looked good. I told them lots of fun things that we'd be doing because that's a big part is like you can't just take out the bad without putting in the good and so focusing on the fun activities because it's summertime in Montana and there's tons of fun stuff to do here. So focusing on the good stuff that we'd be doing is definitely how I um, how I introduce something like this to my kids. I don't just say oh we're not eating this and we're not eating this and we're not eating this. Um, it's more about, well, we're going to try this and see how your body feels. And we're also going to do this and this and this and this. But they do know that our dietary stuff is not up for de debate. I do take a very parent-centered approach to feeding my children with structured meal times, which you've seen in my Why I Don't Let My Children Snack video. Um, they have structured meal times. And also as a parent, and this is, I think, what's essential for getting our kids to eat, is I have confidence that what I'm doing is the best for them. Like I have confidence that they were put in my body because I was the best mother for them. And so if I think they need to do a keto trial, they need to do a keto trial. And so I have that confidence in myself and that I have done my own fact checking before I do experiments on my children. And, um, and so then I have that confidence and they just kind of relax into that. It's that confidence was actually hard for me to learn. It took um, reading quite a bit of like actually attachment theory stuff and watching attachment theory videos on YouTube to see how important having a parent that's a solid, confident leader is really important for children's development and for children to kind of re relax into their role of being children and let the adults worry about the other stuff, that too many choices is too hard for kids. So that's something that I have definitely taken into our eating and... Um, it's definitely been beneficial. So anyway, my kids have been allergic to dairy and eggs in the past, and that resulted in eczema. So I thought I would do, since I'm doing so well eating mostly meat um, and the carnivore diet type thing, I thought that was a little extreme, more extreme than I wanted to implement for them this summer. So I wanted to do a mostly meat keto, and I figured that since I'm already monitoring what they're eating, I would go ahead and take out dairy and eggs because we have had problems with them in the past. They don't have eczema anymore, but... I just thought, well, it's something that I know that our body or our family maybe is susceptible to, so that's a good thing for us to take out. And I knew that you'd want to know what I was feeding them, so I took pictures of most of their meals so that you could see what's going on. I didn't get pictures of a lot of our breakfast, but they had elk sausage, pork sausage, and beef sausage with some bacon and a few berries most of the days. There are these organic grass-fed hot dogs that I get at Costco, and hot dogs do get a bad rap. But if they're from clean animals, like if they're grinding in the like the junk that we shouldn't eat or the junk that we don't eat, that's actually the super nutritious part that has all the collagen in it and it has all the like micronutrients. Organ meats are great. So if there's organ meats and these organic grass fed hot dogs, like that's awesome. So they had those um, and I cook skin on chicken. In this description, I'll link to a video that explains why I love grilling so much and it's kind of like saving my life right now. They had pickles, sugar snap peas, cherry tomatoes with pork rinds as they waited for the hot dogs to cook. They had ketchup and mustard with the hot dogs. Um, dinner was chicken strips breaded in crushed pork rinds and calf liver that was also breaded in pork rinds. I'll make up a quick meal plan for you so that you can see this in writing if you want to have a quick written description of these meals. Look for a link in the comment section. 
And then um, I bribed them to eat, because liver, they loved it as babies, which I have done other videos on that. They loved liver as babies. They don't love it so much anymore. So I bribed them to eat liver with more sugar snap peas, because that's what they wanted. Here's a breakfast. There's keto lemonade for electrolytes. I'll link in the description of the video um, that recipe with elk and applegate pork sausage with berries. You'll notice that I'm giving my kids a good amount of sweet veggies and berries. It's because they have such a higher carb tolerance on keto than most adults do. Over the year, I experimented with my daughter quite a bit and her carb count because her symptoms of being in ketosis versus not were so obvious. And I learned that her limit's pretty high. It's like 40 or 45 even. I can push it um, a day. I'm pretty sure that all three of my kids are in ketosis by this morning. I didn't see any of the lethargy or dehydration in my little guy this year that I did last year. And I wonder if his body remembers how to get into ketosis now since he did it last year. And that's just like kind of encouraging that I'm changing their metabolism and their metabolic pathways. So today is the day I started to notice my middle child's behavior. And this is what I am so excited. And I'm not going to go into details because it's such a hard balance like their privacy versus me knowing how many parents right now are struggling with behavior with their kids. And my kids wasn't horrible. Like I, like he's in counseling and I brought him to the counselor and the intake is just like, does he do alcohol? Does he do drugs? Does he do this? Like, is he stealing? And like, no, it's not that bad. It's not like going to juvenile hall, but it was definitely impacting both home and school more than typical behavior. Like I figure I've got a pretty good grasp on what typical behavior is, and this was on the more extreme end. So in addition to noticing the behavior change, which I'm going to get into more on that in a second, I did notice that their elimination seems a lot healthier today. And so this is what I've learned from the carnivore diet. And I know it's controversial, and I know that a lot of people aren't going to agree with me, but I'm not pushing the veggies with my kids anymore. Like, I add them for color and for flavor and texture and variety. But last time we did keto, we did lots and lots of veggies. And my kids will eat veggies, and they like them just fine. But they go to the bathroom a lot. And it's kind of like if there's a lot of transit going on there, they're not extracting everything out of their food. And you can tell, like, there's a poop chart, which I'm not going to link to in case some of you guys are watch, Or I'm not going to put that up here because in case some of you guys are watching this while you eat. But there's a chart and like healthy digestion makes healthy poops. And if your poops aren't healthy, then either it's sitting in there too long and it's like not going to be comfortable for you and you're going to be reabsorbing some of the toxins or it's going through too fast and you're not digesting the stuff that's like in your digestive tract. So like you can eat as many vitamins and minerals as you want, but if it's coming right out the other end, it's not going into your body. And so this is where digestion is, it's gross to talk about, but it's super important. Like if we have, if we're extracting the nutrients from our food, there should be less volume as we go to the bathroom. You shouldn't have to strain. That's constipation and that's not healthy either. That's like usually a gut flora imbalance or not having enough water or fats. But, and it also shouldn't just be going right through you. So we should like, it's going to be within a range of normal, but you should be extracting your nutrients from your food and it should be going through relatively quickly because that's what our digestive system does. It's like a 24 hour, like 18 to 24 hours, I think is our transit time. And that's what it should be. So I'm not super involved in the kids' bathroom stuff anymore, but I did notice that they are going easier and I wouldn't say that was ever a big problem for my kids, but it just seems like oh, this is better. I thought they were good and this is even better. And so that's a good sign that they are doing well on this diet. We packed, we packed chicken and berries and peas and our keto lemonade for a trip to the river for the lunch. I do ask that meat be eaten first and then they can have veggies and berries. I do require my little guy to drink a keto lemonade, especially since we were going to be active out at the river and in the sun, but I let the older kids choose um, kind of, they crave salt a little bit more than my little guy does. And so I did want him to have electrolytes and I know that they will go for it where he sometimes has to be like encouraged firmly. <laughs> Dinner was elk tacos with seasoning from a packet. At least the packet was somewhat clean and then low carb tortillas. And that's one of our, um, cause I don't buy flour tortillas. I buy corn if we do tortillas or I make them myself. 
And so the low, they make low carb flour tortillas. That's one of our compromised foods. The kids are psyched. Like we just had enchiladas today and, um, I'll do that in my next video, but they were psyched about that. So they had low carb tortillas with lettuce and guacamole. I'm specifically allowing some compromise food, compromised foods to boost morale in the kids and the flour tortillas are one of those. I am specifically limiting dairy and eggs and carbs so I'm letting some other things slide. The kids love those tortillas and they're quite pleased with this tortilla version of keto which is what they have taken to calling it this time. There's no pictures because we had company over and I had a meeting that night and I was scrambling to get everyone fed before I left. For lunch, we made these dairy-free, egg-free keto rolls that are really quite impressive for being keto and egg-free. I do have this recipe on my site. Down below, I'll put the link in the description. I put peanut butter in them, and we also made peanut butter fat bombs with coconut oil and peanut butter and monk fruit and sea salt. Egg roll in a bowl for dinner, and here's where I found the egg allergy. Until this point, we'd been egg-free, but it was I was late with dinner, and I needed something to go on the top of it. And so I just dumped some avocado oil mayonnaise on it, even though I knew it had eggs in it. The next morning, my kiddo that has some behavior stuff, and um, I'll just leave it at there, woke up on the wrong side of the bed, and I hadn't seen that attitude from him since we started keto. And we started egg-free, dairy-free keto. And this was three days after like the best behavior I had seen from this kid in years. And so the only difference that I could see was the little bit of eggs in the mayo. There's this thing called egg rage, and sometimes kids with an egg allergy, and this probably isn't just limited to kids, but um, sometimes kids will have an egg allergy show up as a bad attitude, anger, stubbornness, or rage. And with this drastic change in behavior in this kid, I think that's what we're looking at. I'm so glad we did this allergy elimination trial. <laughs> like, seriously, life-changing. And thankfully, after I took eggs back out, um, within 24 hours, he was back to being his normal sweet self. And I will talk more about egg rage in another video. I looked and I can't find it documented anywhere, I, but it's something I've heard a lot in like the autism community. So I know it's something that other people have experienced. Um, I'm just not finding a whole lot on it, but I will try to put together a video explaining it a little bit better and a little bit more. I just had to get that out there in case someone else is struggling. Um, with kids with behavior issues pulling the eggs even though eggs are nutrient dense like I eat lots of eggs and we were eating seven dozen eggs a week it's not something that I try to limit like I think they're super good but if kids are having that kind of response to them like a immunological response or something like that then um, pulling them can make a night and day difference Popsicles were a favorite after dinner treat. The kids made a couple recipes from the Keto Sweets book and I'll link to this one down below. It's a free for shipping book. So it's like, it's like $6.95 or something for shipping and we love it. So it has color pictures and having a couple cookbooks with color pictures are super helpful when you're putting your kid on a restricted diet. And the directions are easy to follow. My 10 year old made all of the recipes that we had from that book this week. Breakfast was elk sausage again. So we're back to just like piles of meat for breakfast and the kids, the kids are just thriving on it and I really can't argue with it because so am I. And it's something that I never thought I would say. I thought vegetables were healthy. I do like, I'm not going to put my kids completely carnivore because I don't feel like there is enough studies on it, but if, but eating meat as our primary source of food is kind of going to be how it's going to be right now because we just are all doing so well on it. The same rules with peanut butter for lunch, peanut butter fat bombs too for extra fats. They listen today they listen to an audiobook um, and colored together during quiet time and I feel like this is another big benefit. Um, usually I have to separate like they do quiet time and that's something that we do in our house in the afternoons they need it I need it <laughs> so but usually I have to separate them into different parts of like the living room or the main living area or into their rooms and then I kind of like sit and do something in the middle of them and um, so to, so for them to sit around the table and listen to an audiobook together and color together for the whole 45 minutes I was actually in the other room doing video editing that was a huge improvement and I've continued to see that as we've gone through keto this time with a more meat heavy version is that they are getting along better and a lot of this could be because they're a year older but also I feel like they're just a little bit more patient a little bit more calm and it's really nice to see it's really sweet to see and this is a change that I've seen from when we were on keto versus not like the week before 
So it could be, it could be a lot of different things. I'm not saying it's hundred percent keto or hundred percent cause we're doing mostly meat keto, but I want to say that it's a nice correlation and I enjoy it. And so perfect perfection or 100% compliance is never my goal, but I do want kids that can rest when they need to rest and sleep when they need to sleep and eat when they need to eat and listen to directions when they need to listen to directions. And so I do give them like as many freedoms as I can and I enjoy that. Like I enjoy seeing what they're doing and what their own little curiosities are, but also there's a time and a place for it. And that's where I feel like a lot of our culture and whether it's parenting or it's food and I have a feeling a lot of it's food, um, kids are just less parentable right now and seeing my kids be more parentable and more able to get along with their siblings is a great change and it's just really a great sign that they have healthy bodies and minds dinner is elk meat with low carb pasta sauce and miracle noodles catalina crunch um, is keto cereal and that's another one of our compromised foods it's made of pea protein it doesn't even have any artificial sweeteners in it it's um, pretty good, but pea protein, I wouldn't say is a super high quality protein source, but it is allergen friendly. And so my kids are psyched because as you can imagine, they don't get cereal very often at all. So that they can have cereal after dinner sometimes. And if they sleep in on the weekends, if they can sleep in past seven, they can have a little bit of cereal. That is great. I'm not messing with the milk. I just give it to them dry and they are perfectly happy with that huge treat in our house. I'll link to that down below. Our last lunch from the dairy-free, egg-free trial is organic grass-fed hot dogs again, a ton of sauerkraut, and plenty of ketchup because I let them squirt their own. And then this is the last meal that I took pictures of before introducing dairy, which went well. I'll be back in another video to, so that you can see what my kids eat when we're also eating dairy, but still no eggs because we had that egg issue. So I know that was a lot of information. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, it can be overwhelming and I understand like there's so much stuff like I just told you my compromised foods like those tortillas have gluten in them I know the gluten's not good for my kids um and then cereal with pea protein like not the best thing I could be feeding them but and like tons of ketchup and that ketchup is just Heinz from Costco like it's within their carb limits they're in ketosis still but again not perfect foods and so I don't ever want you guys to feel intimidated or feel like you don't measure up there's like a time and place for stuff and there have been years like years that I knew diet would help my kids and I just could not keep them on a strict dietary protocol and that's just it is what it is and then diet's always part of a bigger thing like I said we use counseling we use like occupational speech physical therapies we use like the special education at school for my daughter um we just are a big proponent of all of the good things and so I don't I hope that by watching this you were just encouraged if you'd like to see more I have more to share and it's my goal to make this as accessible as possible for you because I do know how overwhelming it is and so everything I've done for my kids I can link down below like I've got a free webinar I've got tons of videos on keto I've got like more encouraging stories on how it's helped my daughter and all of that I want to share with you. If you wanna click on any of the videos or any of the downloads, I'd love to have you. Again, like this video if you found this helpful. That's super helpful for me. Subscribe and I will be back with more similar content. And if you can share this with people that might find it interesting or helpful, I would love that as well. I will see you later. Thanks, bye-bye.